you got these headwind or tailwinds for the company going around the second largest unit park, uh, their second largest segment, parks and resorts. So mm-hmm. what's going on there? Okay, so uh, this is one uh, I guess area where uh, the company overall sees a lot of potential. And the more I read about this, the more I think like this is an amazing opportunity, but it's not without its risks. So parks and resorts, like you mentioned, second largest segment, they make up um, about. 31% of total revenue and 20% of operating income. And the thing is, the big... It's expensive to run an amusement park. <laughs> the big project that's coming down the pipeline is Shanghai Disney. And so, this is a huge, huge deal. Uh, the park covers 1,000 acres. Um, Do you know what uh, Orlando is? It's also, it's very, very large. Okay. Uh, but there's more to that that I think is really interesting. So, it's the first Disney park in mainland China. Of course, there's one in Hong Kong. And... The thing there's multiple phases to this production process, so there'll be like multiple parks, hotels, entertainment complex, shopping, everything, the works, um, and you know they broke ground on this in 2011. It's costing them about 5.5 billion dollars, huge investment. I think it's the biggest single foreign investment in China ever, and. Disney will actually only own a 43% stake because there's going to be uh, the the remainder of that's owned by like three sh- you know state owned enterprises. I hope they didn't put up all the money for 43%. <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, the 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 state owned enterprises also put up like over two billion dollars. Okay. Um, and the thing is, you know, one of the big numbers that that I've seen thrown about is the idea that there are 330 million people who have enough disposable income to visit this park. That oh live less gosh. than three hours away. That's the U.S. population. So huge, and be, you know, it's next, Shanghai, next to Shanghai, which is their wealthiest like financial center city. Yeah. Um, tons like of opportunity yeah. there. And the big thing that I think kind of takes us to another step is, you know, they have reserved the land reserve that they need to expand with a few more parks for Disney itself. Yeah. But this thousand acres that they have is only one fifth of this huge 5,000 acre zone that Shanghai is setting aside. They're calling it uh, the International Tourism and Resorts Zone. Oh, wow. And this, they want this to become like a playground, a huge focus for tourism for them to draw out people. So Disney will just be one part of that. But the, I think it's a very strong bid in their in the company's favor that the country and the government is very committed to this area overall because they have big plans. Like we're talking about a decades long plan to develop this area into like a tourism attraction. Wow. Um, so you know you have all that in mind. Huge numbers, 330 million potential visitors. You know all within a very short travel distance. Uh, this is going to be the biggest park, has the tallest castle, the Magic Kingdom castle. Like everybody is looking forward to this, and I'm sure the it'll be a um, a big growth driver for the segment. But something else to keep in mind is that only 30 percent of theme parks in China either break even or are profitable. The rest lose money. So this is not just a guaranteed slam dunk. So even though there are nice projects in the pri- pipeline like this one for the parks and resort segment, you know nothing's guaranteed. I think that Disney uh, is really has a, a nice wide moat around it based on the you know the value. They've of got its some IP really its good names. IP, yeah. So, but overall, it's just something that uh, people should definitely keep in mind for this one piece of the puzzle.